down here to the Sassafras River, a little outside of Galena in Maryland. This is a tributary of the Chesapeake Bay, which is basically what you call the upper bay when you hear about that with local tournaments. We're still targeting pre-spawn bass, early spring, water temperature is about 52 degrees. We're going to fish a little bit of wood cover, dock cover, and any emerging vegetation we can find. The lily pads and a lot of the grass doesn't come up a little, comes up a little later here in the river than it does in the lakes. So here you'll see us on more of a wood pattern and dock pattern as opposed to like a lily, shallow lily pad and grass pattern. But there is a little bit of grass starting to grow in with it. Uh, we'll be working anywhere from six feet down to this spot here. It has a ledge that's down to about eight feet. So, but mainly you're going to fish really shallow in log jams, stick ups, and docks. Throwing a little spinner baits, uh, shallow, shallow diving square bill crank baits, jigs, and other assorted flipping baits on heavy line, long seven foot rods. So hopefully we'll see you in a minute with some more pre spawn bass. So that's what makes that a, you know, a better dock than, say, one that's lined up with a hundred other ones along a barren shoreline. And there's a whole submerged tree out here. You're going to have to slow roll because the tide's a little up to hit it, but I've caught five pounders off of it right now. A lot of nice fish have come off the dock. Numbers generally come off of here in the sand point, and then the big fish come off the dock most of the time. Sometimes they come from here, but in general, you'll catch a lot of smaller two pound fish on all this stuff. And the bigger fish, females, the males will hold here and stage there, and the females will come in three, four, five at a time to the dock, and then they'll go to the back, and then a few more will make their way. And this is a major spawning creek. Fish will come from rivers everywhere to get to this. You know, to get to this pool. And fish from the L, the Bohemia, all kinds of fish come to this river, to this creek, right at the mouth of the creek, you know, the river. Here's what you do on this river. There's some main river stuff. The tra your traditional best spots are all, uh, it's all creek fishing. Off river shit, get it out of the current. We're gonna go to short soon. Won't be long. Hooks are sticky short. I'll turn around and hit all this stuff again. I just wanna pop up on this dock real quick and see what's going on. eddy around the stock. The current will be ripping 100 miles out back there, but you get here and it'll feel like there's no current because the water is boiling around you. It just spins in a giant circle around the stock. I mean, really, it's like boiling. That's how hard the water rips, but if there's no current, you can just sit right here and it actually will pull your boat into the dock when the current's going out because of the eddy. So that's why these fish like this. There's all kinds of brush and the grass. A lot of times grass comes up, all the dead grass that comes out of here, or grass that's been picked up by motors, it all hangs on these pylons. So you have grass, brush, and there's like little holes underneath the dock. It's like 14 feet deep off the end of the last pylon. Most of the time the fish attack though, come off of the first four pylons. I don't think I've really ever caught one. when these fish hit out of these docks. It's like no other fishing. These flipping fish hit. It's been since, I guess, November. We do that all day. They all carp?
<laughs> this type of spot, the only reason the fish hold here is because this kind of cover offers a current break. So if there's no current, there's no real point for them to hold there. And even when they're there, a lot of times they're not aggressive. They just ignore your bait. And then as soon as that current starts to switch, all of a sudden you like you'll make one flip and the current's not pulling. Bring it in, rebate, you know, redo your worm or whatever, and then the current starts, make the next flip and catch one. I mean, that's crucial. I always hear you talk about the tomato barge. What is that? It's actually an old retaining wall. But everybody here calls it a tomato barge. It's kind of the name for it. They thought it was a sunk. There's a story that it's a sunken tomato barge. But. Hmm. see why because there's a bunch of old went there's like old winches on it where they you know used to I guess pull boats in that were out moored off of it. And it's sunk down in the water and people just there was a rumor that it was an old tomato barge, that's what I heard hmm. from a couple guys. Can't even tell it's there though. People don't even know it's there. I've taken guys out here on guide trips that have fished this creek for five or ten years and have never found it. it. Took us a year to find it. We were catching five pound bass right here and didn't even know it was there where you can actually sit on those spots all day. And then the rest of the fish are run and gun fish, where you pick up a fish or two here, fish or two there on shallow cover. But there's about four spots in the river where they're actually quality spots where you can actually sit the whole tournament out and win it on. And they all have something to do with the tide. Every single spot that's like that has some kind of unique relationship with the tide, which is why the fish hold it. One of them's a good outgoing tide spot, one of them is a good incoming and outgoing tide, and then that back there is a good slack water spot. And, you know, the rest is fun too, but it really shines right now. That's where we're going to go in a minute. They fight? Yeah, okay. man. Going down to the wall. See how hard they fight? He's a river fish. I felt him hit it once. He came back and got it. Oh, yeah. Nice little beauty. Fish that, that fish fights as hard as a four or five pounder does in a lake. Let's put it back in the water. Now I want $375 because it's guaranteed fish or your money back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to start the day. where there's like actually big hunks of metal, like a wench and other parts of the seawall and where there was an old dock that went into the shore and that's the type of stuff where you go, wow, that fish didn't hit on the wall, it hit back further. Well, that's what it is and it's got grass growing around it. There's another one of those coming up right up here in a minute. They hit the tandem, huh? Or are you throwing Oklahoma? Uh, no, I got the uh, willows on there. Okay. caught that fish off of the wall because it comes in at an angle here. Yeah, I felt it hit the wall and then a he second hit. later he hit it. Yeah, that's the wall. I actually moved that a little too far. See, it's hard when you can't see it. Right now, if I was in a tournament, I would go in. Once I hit it, I would drop a marker buoy so you could just follow him back because it goes at like an angle in here to the shore. So that's what it is. That wasn't you, uh, that wasn't the fish hitting it once. That was you hitting the, uh, the wall and then the fish took it. I got another one. There you go. Oh, he's a... Oh, he got off. He was nice. There's the wall. Okay. If it cuts in, it's hard when you can't see it. Man. It throws you off when it's <laughs> water deep like that. That was a bigger fish, too. Now you can see it. And there's where the one piece of cover is. It's actually like a winch coming off of it right up there. 